So let's show you how Live Paint works. I've created these shapes. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go in and I would like to fill certain areas of these shapes. Now, to create this, what I had done is I had just created a set of circles here and used my rotate command to rotate and copy those all around. And then I had created a set of rounded squares and done the same thing and placed them over each other. Now, if I were to go to fill in one of these areas here and I were to get one of these, you can see that I could only fill in the entire circle. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to just fill in certain portions of this, maybe just fill this in. And how do I go and do that? Well, using the Pathfinder tool or using the Shape Builder tool, then we start adding and subtracting shapes and merging them together and it becomes a real hassle. What the Live Paint will allow us to do is once we select all of our content and go into Live Paint mode, it will allow us to treat each and every one of these areas that we see here as its own unique area. Now, I wanted to create kind of this stained glass look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Shape Builder tool, and this is not required to go ahead and do Live Paint, but I wanted to slightly simplify these areas before I take it into Live Paint. I'm going to select all my shapes, go to my Shape Builder tool, which is Shift M, and I'm going to then just kind of drag over these areas and add these all together. So every other set of circles and squares that overlap here, I would like to just create a much more simplified shape. Again, this is not something that's required to do in Live Paint, but this is something that I wanted to do because I have a particular look and feel that I want to create when I'm in Live Paint. And it's just going to take the simplification of these areas here by going in and doing that in my Shape Builder tool. Okay, so there we have it. Now, this looks a little bit more like a stained glass window. Now what I want to do is select everything with my selection tool, object menu, go down to live paint, and I'm going to choose make. You'll notice when I turn this into live paint, the bounding box is still there, but the corners turned into those little snowflake crystals. This tells me I'm in live paint. Now the only tool that I can use in live paint is going to be the live paint bucket. And that is going to be the letter K. So if you hit K on your keyboard, this is your live paint bucket here. And this is the only thing that's going to allow us to go in and fill these areas with color. Now you'll notice we have our live paint bucket and above the arrow we have a little kind of a, a little texture on the left hand side of pattern, a slash and then a white box. Well, interestingly enough, when you use your left or right arrows or up or down arrows, you will be able to cycle through your entire swatch panel here on your bucket cursor. Now, I'm just going to stop and I'm going to show you exactly what happens when we actually cycle through all of this content. When I call up my paint bucket tool, what I see is I see the last one used or the, um, the last item here along with a nothing and then the white. As I use my left and right arrows, I'm going to cycle through all of these colors and then get to my gradients. Yes, you can do gradients. You can fill with patterns as well. And then it starts back up at the top. And that's if I use my left and right arrows. I'm going to go through all this section. To get into these other sets of colors, I use my up or down arrow when I'm in the tool. So here's what we have. You can see I use my left and right arrow. I'm going to cycle through everything. I'll get through to the end of my colors. I will then get to my gradients and into my patterns and start at the beginning again. Now, if I go down with my down arrow, that's going to go ahead and that's going to allow me to get into my second set of colors, which is all my gray. And I go down again, that gets me into my other set of colors too. And there it is. So this is going through left to right arrows. Down arrow gets me into here. Down arrow again gets me into here. Okay, so that's basically how I navigate through my existing swatch panel. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to cycle through this and I'm going to pick a color and I'm now going to take the pointer on my live paint bucket and simply click in those areas. And you can see that that goes and that defines those areas as separate areas here, only when I'm in live paint. And then when I take this, I can go and I can fill those shapes right there. 
Now to cycle through different colors, I'm just going to use my left and right arrows and I'm going to pick different colors from my swatch panel. And those I'm going to hover over. How do I know what I'm targeting? Well, the red bounding boxes there just simply show me what I'm targeting. And then the color that I've chosen, the larger color right above my arrow here, is what I'm going to go and fill this with. You can have a lot of fun going through here, filling these shapes, defining the areas, clicking on there, and filling those shapes in. I'm going to cycle over to kind of a little bit more of a soft blue and do this as well as I go through and fill all those shapes. Pretty awesome. Now here's what's really interesting. If you get into any of your gradients that you have inside here, you can fill it with a gradient, you can fill it with a linear or radial gradient, or even a pattern. And that could be kind of fun too. So maybe I go in and I fill this with a gradient. And it just simply takes that shape and it fills that with the gradient right there. And it's like, wow, you know, that could be totally cool. Well, it can be. Okay. Now I'm going to click back on my selection tool and there is my kind of cool stained glass. All right. I like it. I can select this whole group of items that's a live paint, and I can also go in and I can control the stroke. Right now I have a one point black stroke. I can take that off completely and get a very different look. But I could change the color of the stroke to any other color that I'd like, and I can add a beefier stroke, a thinner stroke on that as well. So that could be really cool too. Now keep in mind that I'm still in live paint. How do I know that? Well, I can't go in and I can't just pick up any one of these shapes here. And when I click on it with a selection tool, I'll notice that I have my little crystals here in the corner that tells me I'm in live paint. Now, if I'm done with this, and I would now like to break this out of live paint, which I don't have to do, I can leave it in live paint and go and make any edits that I want to with this. I could go in to my object menu under my live paint, and I could expand this. Once I expand this, I now break it all apart out of live paint, and each one of those individual shapes that you see here from the overlaps here becomes its own shape. So I'm going to choose Expand, and it breaks it all out. Let's go over to the Layers panel, and let's take a look here and see what it actually does. So here I have my group of items that's all grouped here, and I have two different sets of items. I have my entire stroke as a separate set of items, and I've got all my fill shapes as a set of items too. So that's kind of interesting. I'm going to go and click on the group here and I'm going to ungroup it. And now I could actually move all of my fill shapes separately. Make sure I ungroup that twice. It's a two ungroup kind of thing. There is all of my outlines. And then I have all of my fill shapes separately. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so you can do that. Not a problem. But that's how you can go back in and you can then edit those shapes after you go into Live Paint. Now here's one cool thing. If you would just like to take these shapes and make them into shapes without filling them, you can. Go into Live Paint. You don't have to fill any of the shapes. Expand that Live Paint and you've now broken these into all these separate shapes. You don't have to fill them. Nothing says you have to fill them. That's really cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to kind of more of my freeform. Okay. I was doing a rock, very poor rendition of a rock, but I had to sketch it really quickly. But now I'd like to fill these shapes here with color. Well, clearly when I go into here, I can see that these are just lines, all right? And in order to fill this area of color here, there's no easy way to do this. I could draw a box behind there and place it behind, but I don't want to do that. I want to use my live paint. I'm going to select all those lines. And you'll notice that some of the lines don't quite touch. They don't get come close to the edge. We're going to fix that. So with all of my random lines created here, I'm going to go into the object menu under live paint, and I'm going to choose make. So it makes it into my live paint. I'm going to press the letter K to get my paint bucket tool. And I'm just going to hover over any one of these and show you what this looks like. Any place where there's red, that's going to be a shape that can be filled. Okay. So I got all these randomly filled shapes, but you know, it's like, okay, I see these kind of things and it would be nice to be able to go in and actually create some block offs here where these lines don't actually touch the edge. And how do you do that? Under the object menu, back under live paint, we're going to research our gap options. Gap options allow me to detect the gaps 
in between the lines and other lines, edges, wherever they may be. It normally starts off with small gaps. And there are no small gaps here, because small gaps are going to be a certain size. I don't know what that small gap certain size is. But I can go and I can do medium gaps. Ah, right there, there's a medium gap. So it, you can see right there, that little red line tries to create a barrier there. Large gaps, ah, okay, so these are large gaps too. And then you can go into custom gaps where you can say, okay, you know, what I want is I want anything that's going to be, you know, like 10 millimeters, fill that gap right there. Now, when I fill this gap, it's kind of like an invisible fence, okay? The line doesn't get drawn right there. It just simply fills it in so that you can't go past that area with your fill color. You can, however, close the gap with paths where it actually will create a path across there and actually draw a line and put a path there. Right now, I'm just going to leave it with the gaps here, and those gaps are just going to be kind of an invisible line right there, and I click OK. Now when I use the letter K with my paint bucket tool and I go in and I choose some colors here, now I can go and I can click on those areas and you can see that those areas will allow me to fill those in based on what I did with my gap detection. There it is. In fact, let's get to the end here because we've got some fun patterns and you know, patterns can be fun to fill this content as well. It's like, okay, that could be really cool. Gradients, patterns, you name it. Yeah, they can be filled in. Okay, so now we got this kind of smorgasbord of everything. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. And you'll notice those areas where the gaps were detected, it did actually go in and kind of draw a straight line between the edge of that line and the edge of the closest line to it. So these are my shapes. But now, you know what I'd like to do too is I may want to go in here and it's like, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could change the color of those lines? Well, you can. The paint bucket tool just isn't the paint bucket tool. If you hold down your shift key, you're going to get your stroke tool, okay? No, nothing special, it's just the paint live paint bucket tool. So the letter K, and now you go in and you simply hold down your shift key. I'm gonna get to a color that's gonna work here so you can see this quite easily. And if I hold down my shift key and I touch those lines, zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better, all my lines are black. But if I hold down my shift key and I touch a line based on what I've chosen here, I could now go in and I could scroll through and say, hey, I'd like that to be magenta. And I hold the shift key down and with the shift key held down, I go and I take my left and my right arrow and I cycle through the colors and I click on those lines while I'm holding down my shift key. And you gotta touch right on there to get that red line to highlight here. Okay, so it's kind of a tricky little situation. You gotta hold down your shift key the entire time and then use your left and right arrows to cycle through your colors and then make sure you touch that line and it activates in red right there so you can see how you're gonna be able to get to those colors. So you can actually go in and do both the shapes, filling them with the color, and also the lines as well using this. So this could be kind of cool, okay? Now, if we were to go into our layers panel now, you could see this is a live paint group. Now, what's interesting with this is that I could go in here and I could access certain items inside here. And these are kind of like live paint items. And look how I can dynamically change the angle of those lines. And you can see how I can actively change the borders here. And this allows me to change what I've actually done in my creation. So if I were to take this line and move it up or down, you can see it's still creating content or shapes here, but I can then go in and I can move them back and forth and be like, wow, this is great, and dynamically change it right here. So that's cool. So you don't need to take it out of live paint mode at all. You can just leave it in live paint mode. But if you do decide to take it out of live paint mode, object, live paint, expand. And then when you expand that, you no longer have live paint mode, you now have all of your strokes, and then you have all of your fills right there as two separate items. So live paint could be a lot of fun. It's quite interesting, it's quite dynamic, and it's great for creating very complex shapes and allows you to turn those into those shapes so that each shape and overlap 
and intersection of those things can become its own shape. Whether you want to use a live paint bucket or the live paint brush to fill or stroke those areas. So I'm going to show you a trick. If you wanted to create something and break them up into multiple shapes here, you certainly can. I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to duplicate that circle using my option or alt click and drag and then use my command control or control D to duplicate all of those. And I'm going to fill these with a color right now so you can see how this works. Okay, this, it doesn't require you that you fill this with a color. I'm just doing it so you can understand what's going on. But take these shapes, I'm going to go into the object menu and choose live paint. I'm going to choose make. So now we've turned that into a live paint object. Now I could go with my paint bucket tool and I could fill these with different colors here. And you can see that each one of those overlapping shapes forms its own shape right there. I don't have to fill this with a color. It's not something that's required. So now I'm going to go back under live paint and I'm going to choose expand. Okay. And whenever you get out of live paint, it always becomes a group. So I have to ungroup this. Okay. And now you see when I pull this all apart, you're like, okay, it didn't separate those shapes. Keep in mind that that's just the stroke that sits on top. Okay. Now here's your grouped set of shapes. I'm going to ungroup this again. And you see when you go through here that it has actually taken out those shapes and allowed you to expand those shapes separately, each and every one of those shapes. So this didn't require me going in and actually using the live paint bucket tool to fill those shapes to get them to be broken up. I took those circles, I went into live paint, and then I just chose to expand out of live paint, giving me all these items, all separate items. And the one thing that does throw people off is that you see the stroke and when the stroke is done and you ungroup the set and you get the group of the strokes and the group of the fills, it looks like everything stayed together. Well, it doesn't separate the strokes, but it does separate the fills. So that's a really cool feature right there. If you do something complex and you would love to get all these overlapping shapes, the live paint could definitely be something you want to try.